I wish. React had the two features I'm going to show you in this video. What I'm about to show you is a new framework called Quick. I'm only gonna show you two features of this new framework though. Why only two features? Take a look at them and you'll know. What Quick does is it takes the features of React that have been well established that we all know and love, like JSX for example or the component syntax, and applies them in a completely new way in a very elegant manner with what we don't necessarily love from React. Take a look at how you declare states in React versus in Quick. It's more performant and it looks better. Check this out for example. This is the way we create a traditional React component by exporting a default function or an arrow function if you want a component that you can call however you want. Big difference here in Quick where we declare a state and then render out some JSX. The JSX is an element we will also find in Quick components. The way we define a component is fundamentally different though. Instead of declaring a function, we can export default a component dollar sign that we import from at builder.io slash quick. And this takes a callback function instead of being a regular function like a react component. And now we get an error because we're not returning anything. But if we returned JSX from this component, the same way as in react, by the way, we return JSX, then we get a valid quick component. And by the way, if you're wondering what this weird dollar sign is, no, this is not jQuery. Instead, this dollar sign that you can see right here in the component dollar sign signals to the quick optimizer which functions in this application to split up into smaller chunks so we can lazy load each one of them. So check out how the state is declared separately. Instead of taking the traditional React approach with state and set state, we can say, for example, const store is equal to, and now the, the syntax is slightly different or the naming is slightly different. Instead of use state, it's use store that we get from at builder.io slash quick as well. And then here we can pass in the same value, for example, count zero as an object that we would in a normal use state in React. Now, let me show you the coolest thing there is about this state. So let's render out the store.count, the actual value of this object, in our case, just currently zero on this page. And also let's log out that the component rendered. First big difference. Let's put the store.count inside of a p tag. And then let's below that create a button called increment count. And what we can do inside of this button is very different from in React. We can call the onClick dollar sign again for optimized behavior. And then we can call an inline function to say store.count plus plus. We can directly mutate the store and take a look at what happens on the browser. This is the component we're currently building. You don't need to worry about anything else. Just this component is important right here that you can see on the left hand side. If we reload the page, there is no console log that this component has rendered right here. This console log is not being shown. If we take a look at the server side, there is a log, but only once when this page is rendered is that being logged out. If I click on the increment count, you can see the count is being updated just normally, like in React, but the component is not being re-rendered. This is not being logged out in the console. So the approach that Quick takes here, instead of re-rendering the entire component with its children, like React would, instead, only this property, only this p tag right here is being rendered anew. That's all well and good, but what about use effect? One of the most important hooks of React. It's been well established, not necessarily loved and sometimes criticized. Take a look at the very elegant approach that Quick takes in replacing use effect with its own version of tracking changes in certain values. And the way we can do that is by using something called use task dollar sign for optimized performance again. And what the use task takes is also a callback function. And we can destructure two things from this use task, A, the track and B, the cleanup that you also know from use effect. Let's destructure the track. And now we can opt in to track certain value changes. For example, let's invoke the track with yet another callback function. And inside of here, whatever we return is the value being tracked. So in our case, we want to track the store dot count, meaning now this use task will run every time the store count changes. Let's log out count changed, save that and go back into our browser and see what happens. 
every time I click increment count now, we can see just this function is being run, but not because the entire component is being re-rendered or anything, but because we have specifically opted in to this behavior by using the track function. So with these two changes, Quick looks very promising. By no means is it a perfect framework. I've tried experimenting with it and because it's in such an early stage, it's almost not supported by any major libraries and some of the docs are, you know, not ideal. Some error messages, when you click on the link that's in there, you get to a 404 page which is kind of typical for brand new frameworks, right? We can all understand that, but it does look very promising and I'd be super interested in hearing what you think about these two hooks that have been replaced from React and Quick and how you like their approach. And then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.